here in the room with some folks on the executive committee. Uh, you can see who's on Zoom. We've got Riley Ray, Jacob, who I think is technology, correct? Jacob, district yes. technology? Yes. Okay, like perfect. The... Great, <laughs> thanks, Jacob. Uh, Clint, who is the incoming COO for the school district. Melanie, maybe is this your first day back from maternity leave? It is my second week back now. Second. Welcome back. And we have Eric on the line. Um, in the room, we have Will, Kelly, Angela, Justin, Brian, Eddie, Megan, Diana, Tom, and Tim. Did I know everyone's name? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess the way we wanted to format this, and I'll share my screen with the agenda today. We um, we have our teammates from SCI and Blythe, I think, out Side the room, they're going to come in in a minute, but I wanted to review the overall master budget with this group. I can find. Okay, a second. Hopefully those of you on Zoom can see my screen now. Everybody here in the room can. So uh, yeah. quick agenda for today. Thanks, Riley. Uh, we have our owner project budget review. So I want to review the overall budget with you. We, um, when we're working with FCI, we're really looking at hard costs only. They don't know all the other costs associated with the project that we're um, going to be budgeting for. So I wanted to give you a big picture. Um, then FCI is going to come in. They're going to present the design development estimate. Um, and answer any questions that you might have. We'll have our big picture with them. And then they have uh, one of the ways um, in school projects, especially when we know we have a finite budget, one of the ways we manage costs, especially in our environment today with costs escalating rapidly, is to have what we call add alternates. So there is scope that's not in the base scope that we're going to review uh, with you all. Um, as we might want to add things back into the project. Uh, and then once we get through the money, uh, Peter and the Blythe group folks wanted to talk about memorabilia um, and an approach to that. And I think, Megan, you've probably been in some of these discussions about that. So we just wanted to get your thoughts and give you an update on how that's going to be um, honored in the new school from the old school and the history of the old school. And then uh, if, I, uh, if I have it, I will review the groundbreaking ceremony program with you all to make sure you're good with how that looks. Um, that is scheduled for June 1st, and I believe in the morning. Uh, is that right, Diana? Yeah. Okay, perfect. And there's like a committee that's been meeting to talk about the groundbreaking and, and we just recently met and decided on the date and trying to understand you know, what it all is going to encompass to have the celebration for the community. Um, so with that, we can jump into money. I guess what I want to say overall, and I was telling some of the folks who came early, we're working on several um, K-12 projects right now on the Western Slope and several other projects that aren't K-12, but other public projects. And most of them are trending um, like 20 to 30 percent over budget, because as I think in my lifetime, this is the most cost of things have ever escalated. And we didn't know that a year ago when we were budgeting for the project. We thought COVID was going to probably have an impact. We didn't know how much. Um, we, of course, didn't know about the, the war in Ukraine was going to happen and things that are just going to continually get like have some um, variables on our supply chain and materials and labor. So um, we had built in, and I've explained to the board the last few months, because I know the board's been very interested in that. Um, we talked about how part of our budgeting process to get to the $144 million number um, was to include escalation. And so we were trying to project where are we going to be, so this is last summer, where are we going to be next summer when we break ground so that we don't have a ton of painful redesign, which ultimately delays our project and then costs more money. So we, we lose value as time goes on with the money that we have in, in a school project, again, 
the budget's the budget. There's really no other way to get additional funding. So the first slide here, so I just want to say the teams worked really hard to get us to where we are today. Um, the first slide with the numbers, this was a slide that was put into the board packet um, when they were deciding to put the bond measure on the ballot. And our overall budget, where was everything coming from was the bond ballot was 115. Uh, the best grant is about $10 million. There was a 19 and a half million from the bond in 2017 savings that could be applied to the project. And that's where that 144.5 came from. Prior to this, back in maybe June, we were getting numbers that were putting us over $150 million for the project. I think we were at like 152. And so the team, design team worked really hard to try to figure out how can we um, reduce square footage? How can we take some things down? Because at schematic design, that's when everything everybody wants kind of gets put in and it's the accordion out and it kind of increased in size. So we got pricing from both um, Shaw and SDI independently. And um, that's when the team started going to work over a couple of months to get from the 152, I think it was, down to this 144.5 number with the hopes that the community would support the 115 um, on the ballot. <clears throat> the, um, as I think you all are aware, the ballot uh, question does not allow for producing any kind of bond premium on top of, so when you go to sell the bonds, um, if we were to sell at 115, the way it's been explained to me, and I don't know this, this isn't my expertise, but the way Wall Street works is that these investment banks want a premium, they want a m extra money. So then they give you additional, um, what's called premium on top of your bond sale. So in this case, 115 was our top that could be produced. So really when they took it to market, and I don't know the numbers, but I think they sold like 90 something million. So that premium was still generated, but it got us to 115 top. So there isn't an additional premium on top of that. Um, no additional funds were allowed for any other capital projects at other schools. This was a single issue bond. Um, if there were any savings on the project, it would go back uh, to paying down the debt earlier, I believe was the way that the question was written. And then um, just on the tax side, it was about $5 a month for a $300,000 home for residential. Of course, commercial um, is held to Gallagher, which is more than that. So last August, how we got to our 144.5, we had all the soft costs, which are the, you know, consulting and furniture and um, some of the technology. That budget was about 15.5 million, about 14% of the hard costs. The hard costs after we went through iterations to reduce hard costs from the initial estimates we got was 110 million. And then we carried escalation and owner contingency below the line. So both of those were eight, about 8.4 to 8.5%. Um, when we're that early in the process, we're generally a little more comfortable with a little bit higher percentages on those, especially not knowing what was gonna happen in the market. But um, this is what we had and, and we were, you know, that's how we move forward with the 144.5. Um, again, as I mentioned, escalation is to make sure that as we know cost always increases over time, Sometimes it might plateau, but usually there's a slope going on there with um, the rate of change of cost. So as long as we're kind of anticipating that's gonna happen, then we don't have to trigger extensive redesign and delays in the project. So we're trying to absorb that as we move through the month. Contingency <coughs> um, is for, it's on the owner side, which is why we don't have our friends from um, SDI and and Blythe in the room right now, but this is the owner side of the contingency. We use it for unknown conditions, like say that the soils were bad and we need to spend a little extra money digging out further soils. Um, you know, we're on, we're on a deep foundation on this project, but that's a typical use of owner contingency. Um, we might find more asbestos before, and we have actually, um, so we might find more asbestos in the old building before we take it down. That's something that's unknown, but we kind of know there's gonna be unknown which is why we have contingency on the owner side. Any questions on where we were last year? Because I know all of you weren't here when we were developing this budget. Okay. 
So <laughs> the big uh, curtain opening here. Uh, we are here in May of 2022 at design development. Our total budget bottom line is 144.5 because we can't go over that number. Uh, where we are in the soft cost, we actually have gone down because we've gotten some savings over what we had projected on some of the soft costs. So um, I think some of the design fees were less than we were anticipating originally. I'd have to go back and look at the master budget to look at what went down. Um, and the good news is we're finding out, I think that the uranium that we thought was present isn't nearly as bad as we thought. So we had put a number in there. We're not gonna need all that money, but now we're finding out that there's more asbestos. So that kind of switches, but I think overall we might've had a savings there on the soft cost because abatement and uh, that goes into a soft cost. Um, where we are with our hard costs, um, now that the documents are a lot more developed with um, Blythe Group and DLR, is about 120 million. That number also includes the permit fees that we pay as an owner. So when you see FCI's number, it's not gonna add up exactly to 120, 184, but it's gonna be pretty close. It's right around 120. Uh, so the good news is, is that we were planning on escalation being reduced over time. Uh, so we still have three and a half million in escalation to get us from today to where we need to go um, to get to our guaranteed maximum price because we're still not at the complete end with the construction documents from our design team. But we have a really good idea of where it's gonna be. So that three and a half million is to get us through the next couple of months because we are seeing um, cost escalation over 1% a month currently. We're good. <laughs> um, owner contingency. So we've also used some of that to um, shift into hard costs as well. We're down to about five and a half percent right now at design development. Again, I like it. A, what's that? It can be. Yeah. So that's what you can use it for. Um, we like to not. So what, then what we ask FCI to do is give us a deadline for each ad alternate that we need to give them direction on. And the hope is that as we're, as we move through the project, we get out of the dirt, we start going vertical, um, that our risk then starts going down, which can give us a level of comfort to use the contingency that we set aside in a worst case scenario to start buying back in some scope. Um, so again, overall, um, we're pretty pleased with where these numbers came back, we're under $500 a square foot. Uh, we are working with some schools that are north of $600 a square foot right now. And so um, this number is, and you'll see that in more detail when FCI comes in. The bottom line doesn't change. Our contingencies of course went down, but we expect that to happen over time. And um, that's where we are with the budget, over, master budget overall. So when we're talking through some of these things, you'll know what we have. We don't need to make any decisions today on ad alternates or like big cost reductions if you all want to go for further cost reductions. Um, but we're gonna present some of those to you today. I think that was all I had. Oh, this is really tiny. <laughs> um, but this is, a, so when I'm kind of rolling up all these soft costs and all the hard costs, um, this is what our master budget workbook looks like. And so um, this is, these are like all the things that go into the soft cost and then all the things that go into the hard cost is, you know, that's smaller because it's mostly just construction and permit fees. But a lot of these are things that we're tracking, we're forecasting as we get more information. So we're always kind of looking out into the future to plug in numbers of where we think things are gonna end up. So we can constantly see where, where we are help manage the risk for you folks on the money side so that we don't ever go over that 144.5. And maybe there's a desire to, you know, come in under budget and we need to have those discussions as the months go on, but we don't have to have any exact numbers, you know, today, unless y'all want to talk about that. And we'll do, you know, you all get to make these decisions as a district, as the district and, you know, the team is equipped to move forward on the decisions that you make. Any questions on this? And then the other thing I'll say about contingency and FCI is gonna review that today. Um, they hold contingency on their side as well. So part of our procurement process, it's very typical that the contractor holds construction contingency on their side. 
because they have some unknowns that they have to figure out and not come back to us for more money. So you'll see some significant dollars. I think it's over. I'd have to look at, can't remember off the top of my head, but it's, I think it's over $2 million that they're carrying also. So that's another $2 million in contingency. Um, that's ultimately the school district's money, right? And FCI wants to help us spend that wisely. My experience with FCI and a lot of contractors is that once we get through some of the more risky portions, they're willing to release that so that you all can buy at alternates as well with that money. Because again, it's the school district's money. So it looks like we've got somewhere around 12 million. It's, yeah, it's, it's like somewhere right in that range. If we're talking about another two million FBI, right? So we're at like nine, and they might have two. It, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's not, but at the same time, I think the team's pretty comfortable right now with where the design documents are what the design team's been reacting to over the last couple of weeks as we've been getting pricing back. So, um, yeah, I mean, typically going into a brand new construction project, we like to see about maybe seven and a half percent in contingency, and that's after escalation's been spent. So we're kind of in that range. Um, I personally like 10 <laughs> because I like to feel more comfortable, but seven and a half is usually okay. And then the risk we bookend some risk on this project because we have to get out of the soils first, but then at the end of the project is when we get into the abatement that we don't know, and then whatever soils conditions are underneath the existing school that we have to turn into fields and, and parking lot, um, there's some risk there. But So we won't let you all spend all the money <laughs> before the building's knocked down, and we're going to try to always save money through even the end of the project in case we run into some soils issues at underneath the, the existing school that's been there. But it's pretty typical on a school replacement project when we're building a new school on the same campus that we're going to have that risk. And so we're continu we continue to hold back money for that at the end. So, what the hard cost breakdown is of building the new building and during the like, planning phase, and what? And during now. Oh, the yeah. So, FCI has all that detail. They're going to come in and present that. Yep. Anything else before I bring these guys in? Can, can that get worse? Or is that <laughs> what was that? <laughs> can what get worse? <laughs> oh. Yeah. delivery system to go to a guaranteed maximum price is the day that the district signs that GMP is kind of the day that the district no longer has that burden of escalation on their shoulders so all that risk gets shifted to the contractor. Um, there are instances and I'm not sure from us to them too. GMP will be the end of the summer probably so we've got like three months but um, they're also forecasting it, right, in their DD estimate. They're trying to make sure that we're covered so that we're not at DD, and then we get to our GMP, and they're like, oh, by the way, you owe us, you know, it's $8 million more. That's, they're trying to hedge against that as well. And we've had experiences where they were in a message that totally never been back, and we didn't expect as much more. So, <laughs> this I'm is, not trying to open it. No, it's, it's a, a great, great question. Point, that shrug up, up, boom, we're done with that stress. Now they have it, and do they honor that? Because this is not a house. This is Really, funny. Like at some point, someone could be left with the bag on 20 minutes. I don't know. Is that going to have to come back on? There's a funky battle between two entities. I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, maybe that's. Um, no, it's a good question. I would say um, historically, we don't have any risk once we sign the GMP. Now we're in unprecedented times. There might be a couple things that come up where a supplier has like some sort of very over standard increase and we ask for them to come to us with all of the information from that supplier um, and or the sub needs to provide that with a lot of backup and we can evaluate that as is 
what's fair, right, and reasonable here um, because of the markets we're going through, unlike anything that we've ever seen. Um, but in general, that risk transfers to them. Right. Yeah. Hmm. It's so hard to divide or to figure that out because so many school change orders are scope ads that the owner wants because we didn't want to take them right away. So I, I'd have to go back and look through that data. I mean, I think industry standards like 11% or so potentially, um, but it's usually lower on schools. The only, the only thing I'm worried about is that abatement, which isn't FCI's control, that's the abatement contractor, and then um, potential unknowns for underneath the existing school. But we would certainly want to make sure we're carrying contingency for that. That's kind of my biggest risk in my mind. And I'd love to, you know, I'm sure other, I'm sure FCI has ideas on where, but they're trying to fill in all the gray areas right now as they're putting these numbers together. But that you could, you should ask them that question too. Is there any way to find out soil conditions under the existing facility prior to demolition? I don't know. Probably. Might be nice to know these works. Yeah, you know, some people thrive on surprises. A lot of those questions have been asked on your behalf by our team already and Eric's team and Eddie as we've been really pouring through some of these numbers the last like two weeks. Okay. So um, I can't think of, that. yeah, I mean, that's why we're here. <laughs> um, and so the team's been working really closely on trying to get through this. That design team has reviewed the numbers. They come back with lots of questions. So that's all I've been kind of going through. So I wouldn't feel like you need to. No, no, it's right. Not right. On the monitor. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think overall we're pretty pleased with where it came in. I was hoping for like 118, 117, but I'm not surprised it's at 120. So. They prepared to sign purchase orders like right away. Yeah, I think they're going to talk about that. They've um, they want to proceed with a mechanical contractor right now. They've held interviews. They'll talk about that as well. But yes, they want to get materials coming ASAP. Now my wheel has completely, so that's probably more a, a Peter question, but generally speaking, when a school gets to 85% capacity, that's when you start thinking about an expansion or a new school. So we're talking about lower, a lot lower than the max amount that could be stuffed in that building to kind of be comfortable. Once you start going over 85% capacity, that starts to feel crowded. That's probably like CLR. Area in the Appleton, and plus you also have between three to eight nine. Like when you walk around three to eight nine, it's just not exactly packed. You know, 
amount of classrooms that you can the class was open to a day at nine or you know, to find yourself time there. I think the biggest question I get from you know Grand Junction High School staff, and I think it comes from just lots of years of not having improvements on the building, is their fear that we're gonna move in and take some of the improvements away and then they won't get the product they were promised, so to speak. So I think, you know, right now it looks like we could get to stay on course and that'd be a question for SCI too. But um, I think it's gonna be important somewhere to maybe do a presentation to session staff to sort of let them get their questions answered so that they're, you know, not kind of feeding into that paranoia about what's gonna happen if, you know. So our projected enrollment for next year is 1650. Probably um, the We have had and, and Shannon has been to and what they thought we were going to get were about 100 course requests. She gave them over the freshman, what they thought our freshman class was going to be at. But anything I can do is probably going to be open. And that means like, well, for us, that's like every single room is used. Classroom, which I know is office space, but. When you ask who that, where we're going to be, I think it's the majority of those kids coming from the or are you choice to boundary adjustments and um, kids who traditionally like would have gone to other programs or should be. Did they let FBI in with the? Hard pass conversation? Yeah, thanks, Eddie. I'm trying to figure out how we can stream it on Zoom with another computer. Yeah. So everyone on Zoom, we are bringing FCI in to present the estimate. I just don't know if you're gonna be able to see anything on your screen. Because I think okay. they're going to use a different projection tool. You just let me know what document they're looking at. Pull it up, um, or if you wanted to follow along. So I realize it. Okay, they're walking in. We'll be right back. Okay. So Riley, you're going to get the slides emailed to you so you can share the screen with the Zoom folks. Does that work? Yeah, I can pull them up. Uh, Evan is going to send them to you, Riley. Okay, I'll keep an eye out.
So, Riley, as soon as you see those from Evan, you can pull them up, and we'll also be just watching that through Zoom here in the room. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. So as soon as Riley pulls up, I put together a slideshow, or, or Evan put together some slides at one thirty. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just waiting on Riley to put the couple slides. Here we go. You good? Yep. Scene one. Okay. No. So I got here. That's a pretty picture. Try this one. Right here. Riley. Riley. Oh, Riley. Yeah. How's that? Okay, that's good. You can go ahead and go to the first slide. Okay. And this is really for people on the on uh, I'm on the Zoom call. Everybody in the room has a copy of our. Uh, design development estimate. Um, very first page here on the back of the first page is our summary sheet, and that's where I'm going to really stay focused on for the most part. There's a lot of there's a lot of numbers and figures back behind it, um, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll kind of talk about how we got uh, to this uh, package of numbers. So um, yeah, so uh, design development drawings. Basically, uh, we went out. To, um, well, we spent the last six weeks, I guess, working with the DLR and the Blythe Group and some of the ownership group, going through the design, looking at uh, different features of the building, you know, looking at marker board brands and is that the right brand of price for this particular job? And really fine tuning those types of details as we went through it. Um, and, um, uh, you know, looking at different areas that, you know, that we think could be. Um, you know, revised, you know, for better value. And we got down to what we feel like is a really good uh, design development estimate. We went out to about 30 subs in the, in the local area and even outside of our area to get some input, right? They're not, they're not bids, but they're really testing the market. What are you seeing on these drawings and what's that worth? So this estimate wasn't just built inside of our office. We went outside to get some input. Uh, to see what the market's telling us. Um, oh, um, as a part of that, we went out and selected our mechanical, plumbing, and and electrical subs um, off of the design development documents. And we had a pretty a very thorough uh, RFQ process. They submitted their qualifications. They submitted past projects. Um, their team. Um, and then we uh, we had an interview process with FCI. The Blythe Group, um, uh, DPM was there, and our mechanical engineer were all part of the interview committee. Interviewed their teams. Um, their their budget numbers that we received were identical. on board um, immediately 
because there's a lot of things going on in the market right now we have to manage. For instance, train equipment to we opened up our uh, specs and we got numbers from uh, train who the district is very familiar with and uh, the long Dykin, right? And they were keen with long controls. So we had two numbers there. Um, train was uh, the low number on, on the on the equipment that they bid, and we had apples apples comparison to. So we got a real good value with them, but they've got a big retooling process coming in their in their warehouses in their fabrication shops that we have to get some orders in, or else we're not going to see equipment for for quite some time, and the prices are going to go up significantly. So we're dealing with mechanical stuff, copper. We're expecting to see copper. Some people projected copper is going to double. Uh, that's what we were told in those interviews, that copper will double in the next year. So the electrician uh, has some ideas to buy bulk copper. You don't have to have the wire size figured out. You just order it um, by the uh, about a pound, basically, and the, and, and the wire size will fluctuate. So trying to get some of those uh, things going right away to avoid cost increases is, is a pretty big deal. Um, uh, another example is the is the plumber and the copper piping. They've thrown out some ideas for some different types of piping that aren't copper that will be able to maintain price. Not, wasn't so much about saving money, but about maintaining money. So. Um, any questions so far on that? Just on the process. Product, yeah. When you when you look at copper versus whatever the other product mm -hmm. is, do you have the same life expectancy yes. with both products? Yep. So the district isn't set twenty years from now it's so kind of fun. No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. So we've been and it, just exploring those opportunities and getting with Eric and his team and understanding what those are and then getting feedback from other from other uh uh, building owners that have used it, we're going to go talk to some of them and see. But but they, but the life expectancy isn't any different. The quality is not any different. Um, that's a good question. Okay. I think that the fit didn't get hurt. Then, what at what point does that happen? So as soon as we get, uh, so for instance, our next bid package, which came out a week a week ago today, is. 100% CDs for foundations, uh, structural steel. Uh, those are the two big ones. Yeah, those were it. And so now we have final drawings. We can put those out to get hard numbers. And so we have another bid package out now for those items. And then the final the final bid package is in July that will have the 100% CDs for, uh, for um, exterior finishes, all the interior finishes, metal studs and drywall, the, you know, those types of things. We got a hard bid number for uh, the helical piers, which we need to start at the end of June, and we have to get those ordered here in the next two weeks. So we had to go out for a hard bid number for that. Um, and um, we had a hard bid number for some utility work that we're starting right now. So, so our next bid package is out right now. And that's where you get that competition, two to three you know, two, you know, different bidders. Uh, just a note about the estimate, it's it's based on, we base our estimates on actual quantities. We don't just do square foot prices and plug them into the numbers. So you'll go back here and you'll see how many doors we're estimating, how many, uh, you know, square feet of tile, that, you know, that sort of thing. So the details there, the uh, design team has done a good job of going through each one of those lines and saying, that's a correct assumption. That's not a correct assumption. We've been back and forth over the last six weeks, to, you know, making sure that our assumptions are correct and that we're meeting the intent of the of the design moving forward. Um, let's see. You'll see the, the the summary page is broken up into three columns. Well, four with a total, but three the the main building and site work. So that's the main building. That's got all the associated site work fields, uh, building demo, um, utilities, uh, the whole nine yards. And then the other two columns is one is for the existing ox gym. And then the other column is the 700 building um, uh, renovations. Our, our, um, our current number 
is a um, that number is on the ox gym is it's got a new roof in it and it's got basically getting it enclosed and weather tight right and then the upgrades right building upgrades inside of that like i think there was a bathroom that we added in some other little rooms that's all part of the add on uh 700 building is very similar that's got a uh, new roof a couple overhead doors uh so we can use that for uh there, there was some need to store some some equipment in there, so a couple of it doors, and then making sure we have access to the to the bathrooms that are current currently in there. And then there's some other upgrades, concession type areas, and, and, and some other things that we made add alternates. So you'll see that on the add alternate list. Okay. Is that it for this page? We feel pretty good about that. Okay. All right, Riley. Next slide. Okay, next page back is the add alternate list that we talked about. So through the process, we've identified a handful of things that um, are, are are fairly easy. And what I'll say is these lists are dynamic. They're, they're, ever, um, they're ever changing, adding, taking away. As we see things that, that we might say, hey, we could, you know, we could take that out now, but add it later. Um, that are that are that are they're pretty easy. We're always having those types of conversations uh, to the point where we we had that conversation this morning on a couple items. So this list represents where we are right now today in terms of different things on um, on an ad alternate list. Um, and um, do we want to go through each one of those or? Maybe we can come back to them, but I, I wanted to add on the yellow column decision deadline kind of for the, the group in the district. Um, our first one isn't even until this coming December. So we have some time to get the building going and going up before we need to make decisions. So right. I just want to make sure that we talked about this earlier, but you know, there's no pressure to make decisions like today. Right. I mean, right. Yeah. Yes. That old dicey situation where mm -hmm. folks come up, I don't, yeah, screw you. Yeah. I'm a janitor, I wear it. I mean, yeah. it's a ton of labor. It is a ton of labor. Yeah. And, uh, cool. <laughs> so how do you anticipate like, supply and demand value is pretty limited on certain labor services? Right. I mean, probably every plumber town would have to work on it. Right. Well, that's the kind of stuff we have to do. So, how do you take control for that? Yeah. That's kind of. Say that's the price. Thinking, well, unless you have your we so we've so, so we've recommended using Falcon Plumbing, their team with Grand Mace Mechanical. They came to the interview with a labor um a, a labor loaded schedule, if you will. And so they know based on their activities that, that they used our schedule, our big picture schedule, they plugged in their activities loaded it with their labor that's required for each of those activities so they'll cut everything on the town say we're going to devote to you they know this work okay. is coming so that's the kind of commitment you're getting from that that's contract right they can't come back and say, hey, correct it's correct and, and ec electric has done the exact same thing so they understand that at, at the peak they're going to have 30 electricians there seems like anyone wants to build a house in town i'll go out here absolutely like, how do we solve that that's right so so that's that okay and then also like on the mechanical side their team with a company called mech mech one out of Colorado springs to do all their fabrication so they're going to prefab all of the ductwork and all the, and all the parts and pieces and ship that here for grand mesa well they're going to supplement grand mesa labor when they need you know for those high peak demand areas sure. so we are reaching outside the area yeah. you like uh, EC Electric. So that's who we would recommend would be EC Electric. Local. Did Orchard Mason Middle School. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it was them and b, &B Electric interviewed and we, we chose, uh, you know, EC Electric. Two very highly qualified firms. I mean, <laughs> One of them simply won it. B and B did not, not by any means lose uh, the interview process. Uh, EC simply won. They they they, they came with a strong team. 
Okay. So just to clarify, everything on this list not currently in what we have right now. So there have been talk, there have been talks with about Chirago. Right now it's a big ticket item. We pulled it out because that's something we can add in later once we see how we're doing overall, right? Right. And so everything in here we've talked a little bit in the EC about the clinic space. So the clinic space currently would just be drywall, is that or not at all? I think we've got that to a usable space, right? So we've got ceiling lights. Shelf. Yeah. Okay, right. So, and the other things aside, because you all can decide on that right. piece of it or how that would get funded. So, we wanted to make sure that was separate. So, those are two things we've talked a little bit about in the exec um, over the months. And wanted to point those well, on, the, on the and alternate, I don't, I don't see anything on the existing gym, the west wall. So, what are you doing with the west wall? You said you were going to dry it in that. So, what would that look like? I mean, that's going to be a really different looking wall separated from an existing facility. So, are you going to do anything to that wall or does that come to the as alternate room? That's included in the space number. Obviously, we have to fill it in with a uh, bricks, uh, block. Okay. So, it'll be a finished wall. Yeah, well. finished wall. Yeah. Because I know there were some conversations at some point. Yeah, it'll be a finished wall. Not plywood. Same <laughs> <laughs> <Our, laughs> plywood. It's our room, right? Yeah, it'll be it'll be a finished wall. There were there were some finishes on the inside. There was a bath. I think it was an added bathroom. Yeah, that's kind of thing that we. Is there, there, is there a bathroom? There is. Yeah. There is. There are two gang bathrooms there. I think we're gonna add another. Oh, yeah. There's no. Sorry. That's <laughs> not, that's not, that's not. <laughs> um. <laughs> I guess projected timeline. Where are we in relation to that? Are we pretty close to where we hope we'd be? We're right on schedule. Uh, so we've got the helical pier uh, guy on board. He's doing a test file uh, this week again, just to uh, do some confirmation. And then uh, that material is, is is waiting for us. So as soon as we place the order, we'll see it. And we're expecting to start at the end of June, putting in deep foundation. So between the school being out and then we'll be doing the demo and getting it cut down the grade and so we're we're right on track in terms of uh, the packages peter and his group have done a great job so far keeping up with the current bid packages so we're you know we're in good shape all those current bid packages might be difficult here what percentage increase have you seen on those over what you're estimated well we actually saved money on the vehicle piers because we we uh, we had estimated driven pile um, originally, and so we had quite a quite a good savings in the vehicle pier side, um, and we were able to work with the design team on, on on doing some things with wall thicknesses of those, and you know we're gonna we're gonna reduce wall thickness and fill with uh, you know grout and do some different things um, to um, to save money. It, it, by going up one wall thickness in helical piers is about eight hundred thousand dollars, and so just trying to look, think outside the box, and look at well, let's go to a thinner wall thickness and fill them with grout. We get the same lifespan. We actually get better bearing. Uh, so we're working through those details right now and putting together the engineering to make that happen. So, um, yeah. Sorry, I'm early. Somewhere okay, so the add alternate is number uh, number eleven. That is the build out for the Marillac Queen. So it's not in our current scope. Current scope is basically a white box. Um, and if we don't build out the Marillac Clinic, it could be classroom space, it could be whatever you know we want it to be. But the add alt for that is number is number eleven. If they're going to pursue grant funding, to, as we talked about a little bit, they they kind of have a good now target from SBI on what that would cost them if they Still need done. to get grant funding. Okay, so they would pay for that. Yeah. If if we don't take number eleven, correct. Somebody they would either have to pay for it or it would just be other usable right. space in school. Mm -hmm. So it's not in it's drywall. Yeah. And Paint, probably. Yeah. And a floor. Yeah. Of some sort. It could be used. It could be used. Right, Megan? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
It would be not going to be a space. Right. Okay. Do we want to look at some of the bigger VE? Yep. Next slide, Riley. So, yeah. So, <laughs> um, normally when you see a VE list, it's a lot longer than this. We always have a lot of good ideas. But that's what we've been doing the last six weeks is, you see, you'll see 67 is actually the last of the, all the, all, all the item numbers. We, we've pared this down into a list of, these are items that really change the look and, and program and some of the function of, of the building. We went through a long list of use this brand of marker board instead of this brand of marker board, use storefront instead of curtain wall and things that don't really change the architectural you know, look of the building. We, we did go through and look at uh, canopy sizes and can we reduce I canopy? I, say, I don't think it's there, right? <laughs> Oh, it's not, in, I'm sorry, it's not in, I'm sorry. Like at press, at press. This is a at press time. We were putting this together while we're printing these um, and so, uh, we, you know, kind of want to run through these and you can see there is some good savings here, you know, um, but, but, but it does change functionality of the building. Um, but one of the, Riley, can you zoom your screen in a little bit to see the costs in the description or the savings in the description? And I'll walk through slide one of these. I don't know if I can, but is it, what about the screen that's up there? We'll go to the next, um, uh, slide and we'll just start walking through each one. Too far. All right. Okay. Nope. I'll go back one. Okay. I thought it was um, back at the beginning. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> so currently, uh, what's in the scope right now is is what you see there is all. Peter, jump in here if I go awry because I'm speaking architecture. <laughs> I don't speak it very well. Uh, is all is, what you see on the screen is all brick. Um, some some combination of some. I don't. Know, it's all brick. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, and, we, and, and there is an option to reduce some of that masonry by 50%. We don't know the areas yet. We haven't worked through the details and make that metal panel. So um, certainly changes the look. The, uh, I would say, you know, metal panel is not as durable and long lasting as brick is. I think we can all. How does that impact you? Uh, I think that'd be negligible. Yeah. So they still would have all the insulation. So if you say that doesn't have prior longevity, what does that mean? Well, I mean, you know, you know, I mean, it's going to last forever. It might fade. You might see some color, you know, differential over, you know, you're talking 50 years, right? Um, you might see some of that, but it's not an uncommon. Um, on them in common, you know, building material to, you know, to see, but it's, it's fairly common. Does it run and bleed into the materials for it? No, not if you, uh, if you use like, um, the, the, uh, the, uh, the rusted metal, that's when you start to see that, that, that bleeding and materials, this will be a, what kind of a cost would that be? Uh, that would be a savings if you did 50%. <laughs> no, that's okay. Yeah. It's about, it's almost $300,000. And Next one, Riley. 
Uh, this one is it's a little hard to see. Um, uh, getting into these details, be a little tougher. There is an outdoor art plaza wall. Um, I don't. Maybe you can explain that better. Is there like tall metal um, screen walls for around the art plaza? Um, we have doors that go from the art rooms out, so it's kind of securing that zone. They're more decorative than the standard metal screen walls. So that would be. I guess is this cost like remove everything? Yeah, we've already okay. we've, yeah we've already simplified them, okay. so we so we gain the savings there already. So this is this the rest is just getting rid of it. Yeah. So okay. Uh, next one. Next, uh, Riley. Um, so we looked at the canopies um, on the on the bus. Well, both canopies. Um, We've already um, shortened this one lengthwise. So as you're looking at uh, coming out of the building, we've brought it back towards the building. And then we have another option to, to, to lower it. So just make it a little bit smaller. It, it, there's not that much money there, but there's there's something that does change the the overall the overall look. So uh, next one, Riley. Sorry, Megan. I, sorry. We we just want to put that out there. Oh, I, I I love this feature of the building, but there is some money to be had if you if you if you. Can I just I know we're not making a decision, but part of what people love about our gym is that it has daylight. I can take out my coffee because I know they're not mine. I mean, it it does go back to literally every other gym, mm -hmm. and that kills my heart. I'd rather get rid of other things. Okay. All right, Riley, hurry up and move past that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, outdoor seating. So the, there's a lots of outdoor benches and concrete benches. You like maybe like what you see at the uh, uh, Booklet Mill is a good example. They've got lots of kind of outdoor uh, concrete walls and seating. Um, and we just we just you know took a run at you know what if you got rid of it um, you know once again uh, we've already simplified those um, so they're they're just they're they're concrete walls they're very functional um, but uh, this would be getting rid of them. So and the, and the first number is the reduced by half. Bottom number is the seating that you're talking about is concrete wall. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we take this one, sometimes we pick that back up in the furniture package. Yeah. So it's movable. Right. I don't know if we want movable. Right. Um, but, you know, there are ways to get it back in if we took this alternate or this reduction right. with bolt, the furniture. Yeah, bolt down, you know, benches or. Well, this one will be really hard. I agree. Yeah. Well, this one's yeah these are tougher to get back they'll be more expensive later because you'll have landscaping in the middle of it but you, you could do that yeah we always have seniors wanting to figure out what can our gym be mm -hmm. and i think that for like, i would rather just put the bill for putting in some picnic tables while we wait for senior classes or whatever i don't know i am not a designer was tim okay or was tim did Tim Leon voice any um, favor or opinions about the concrete wall? I just didn't know. Like, no, I don't, I mean, I don't we did think... at one point have somebody drive their truck through the front of our school. I just didn't know if it was oh. like a safety feature. No, there's no real, yeah, yeah there's yeah. no force protection when you do military stuff. So that, okay, so we can look at some of those, okay. Alrighty. Um, uh, okay, yeah, third floor pop out. There's a handful of features around the building, I, I, you know, I'll call them that, that, that we could get rid of, and it would basically just kind of flatten, put it all in one plane. So there is some money to be had on those. 
Oh, uh, you can see those those seat walls right there where they're sitting. <laughs> um, no, the windows stay. Windows yeah, stay. The windows stay. The windows stay. Yeah. I guess this would be a question. At this point, we have to make these decisions. Can we see a rendering of what that would look like? I mean, right now we're just trying to imagine yeah. what it would look like. Yeah, these are a lot more difficult. Than they, were. <laughs> they were cavalier for the two down the feet. Yeah. Years down the road, like, you can see. Yeah. And you almost want to be like, we got to slow this down. I get you just say, hey, here they are. But this is a, this has got me a little stressed thinking. We really have to be careful about this because. And 24,000 later, out of 160 million, I'd take it to 24 back to have something that has that aesthetic appeal versus can we get creative and find it somewhere in mm -hmm. materials or something? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, that's why the dates are pushed up to London. Yeah, we've got a while to go. Well, this, these decisions on these, so. These are a little more. These are a little bit more pressing than the ad alternates because on these particular issues, these are really going to affect uh, how we finish up the drawings. And so. Um, yeah, I think that would help the decision making process. Yeah. Okay. I guess I look at those numbers and go, really? Right. Right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Find that in the couch somewhere. Right. It's 25,000. Hear that? That looks cool. Any building. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. you're giving that 25,000 associated with 160. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, understood. One change we've made, um, it's not on an alternate or, v, or any VE. You'll see the front entry. You'll see a couple of renderings where the front entry looks a little different. We've actually simplified the front entry, lowered the, the canopy over on kind of the right side of the screen, lowered the canopy, and, and then really simplified that. That was a, that was a, that was a great way to save a little money there. That allows more things like Right, right. So the other entrance was created by like the low end. Mm -hmm. like yeah. You still get it. Say, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Those seem pragmatic. Mm -hmm. I like that. You don't lose it. You're just saying it. Just yeah. I am not a person who's used to having money. <laughs> so, <laughs> how much of this am I allowed to just save over the next couple of years and um, fund? Yeah, I just, you know, when we're starting to look at some of these things, like I think there's going to be some things that we're going to realize, oh, you know what, we really do need those concrete benches out front, so let's go talk to some people and get those going. But I mean, like, I guess I am, I don't want to touch anything that will impact the way it feels for kids or the community or square footage. Mm -hmm. I guess that's my thing. So like, that's why that sawtooth window is so important. Mm -hmm. And this, if I have to choose between this one and the sawtooth, of course I'll give up this one, but you know, I, I just keep thinking about like part of what's so great about living where we live is that view of the monument. And I have a geology teacher that I think is going to have a really killer rock display. Well, you don't lose the window. I know. It's just the it's just the little cap around the outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the and a lot of it too, as we've been talking about the cost of you know, materials, et cetera. So a lot of that, how much flexibility are we really going to end up having? But hopefully, some of Yeah. Okay. And, and we're not in a panic to take every single savings. We just wanted to draw out what if. What if. We've got a what if, yeah. There's opportunities that we wanted to put them out there, make sure everybody's on the same page. These DEI have not already been factored. That's correct. These are, these, are, these are over and above, right? Okay, next slide, Riley. Is that the only third floor, third floor pop out? No, we have one on the, the oh. north side. Oh, you can get rid of one on the north side. Not the other one. <laughs> okay, this is just like we we tried to look at things that we thought maybe were were in the realm of discussion, and we and we threw out um, uh, auditorium balcony and and then lower in the building by I think eight feet is what we priced. How many feet does that pull from the auditorium? 
we still have over a thousand, but we wouldn't be able to fit the whole school in there. So you'd be what nine hundred? No more. So we're like nine ninety. Nine ninety with that. If you took this, you'd still have nine hundred ninety feet. Yeah. And four four ninety. Yeah, because we have we have almost five hundred. And in general, a high school with this population, what's typical? Is there a typical number usually with the high school? Is it like to get half the student body in? I think with this, wasn't it a quarter? I mean, a lot of times, like school do like a five hundred. I mean, like it's just right. depends. It just depends. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, because a lot of times schools look at oh, the gym is where my school student body. So. Yeah. We certainly don't want to have a food and in high school auditorium. No. no. I think there's discussion that CMU is going to be building <laughs> performing arts building. Is that right? I don't know. Yeah. That is, and is that what the company is going to do? Right. They were talking about 900. Okay. So, Diana, do they rent it from the district? How does it work? What's that? Do they, they rent it? Yeah, we, we have them that. And we, you know, partner with the symphony from time to time. So, that's my only concern about getting rid of the uh, balcony is the partnership that we may be able to have with the symphony. And how does that part? We should have a conversation about how that partnership works financially. Not well enough. And so, yeah, that's my point right there. Yeah, it does. It, as we'll say, we need to kind of see if they want to sweeten the one of the One of the consistent pieces of feedback that I get from other building principals is. Um, how nice it is that we have an auditorium that can be for award ceremonies yeah. or I mean you have assemblies that don't make sense to have in a gym like um two three years ago we had a Holocaust survivor we couldn't even talk to our entire student body and those things are I think really cool and we get to host them frequently because we're the only place that's big enough um yeah, I think as long as we can keep a thousand, I'm okay with it. I and Justin and I can all give a sweet number to make sure we can. Um, but it is. <laughs> but I mean, the key would be what we have now. Uh, back lawyer, I told him last night. And well, you're straight. A 1,500 parents come to back lawyer packed. Multiple classes packed. Mm -hmm. 1,500. One creative way to be, I know we need money up front, but we rent it out, we can start a fund, you can make that really fast. I mean, every time we had concerts, not cracker, not a joint. For 70 years, that thing has had hundreds and hundreds. And you've got, it's got a 1500 capacity right now? Right now, yeah. And it, and it really is, rarely is it not packed. And it's like, wow, when you build it, they will come. And it's quite often, that Please, concert yeah. that brings in the biggest name when they come down. They come to us first because they know that practice can pack that no other venue. Again, I guess I would just go back to what's, what's the financial upside you know, to that. I mean, it's great if they have a place to come, but if it doesn't make sense financially so to build it and have it for those things. And that was a discussion that I think we became more and more um, aware we need to have about the cost to rent our office. Our auditorium rents out for the same cost as California or, or through that than ours is hundreds, even a thousand dollars bigger. Yeah. And so, like for us, because our auditorium can hold 1,500 people, when our theater program puts on production, they have to pay based on the number of people that may show up and see it. And so, we're paying for 1,500 people to be able to show up. And so, I mean, us we're pretty proud of one of the for I don't want to say cut it. I also, you know, know that I'm not the only one who needs to think about those things. I just think that if you go too small, we're going to lose something pretty integral to the oh, franchise high school identity because 
like it's, I mean, it's a place where when I was in elementary school, I came to concert there and, and it's where the symphony goes, where community concert goes, when up with people wants to come to town, that's where they go. Oh, yes, they are. They are still the same. We've been district wide, the only place we've been district wide, the stock circle. Oh, the only facility where every staff from all the places would come all the time. I told them, of course, about the little one day, because everyone can be in one place to hear keynote speakers to that. And, you know, that those have those benefits. So one would say, how could you be creative today? Let's now make use of this stuff. We're going to have it. Yeah, we're going to have it. I just want to know how. Well, and I think that I think that's what we have to do. One of the things that we talked to the Symphony earlier is how do we negotiate a long-term contract? Because yeah. right yeah. now it's kind of year to year, and whoever's the principal, and mm -hmm. you know, it's kind of. Yeah, I mean, if we had some of those things, we could justify. So the challenge with this one is we would have to know fairly quickly because it's a pretty big deal. There's a lot of redesign. Um, we're out to bid for all the, for all the components of that, well, the steel and the structure components of that now. Um, so, um, I, so we would have to, to make sure we can, we can get the best value out of the number. We need to, we need to fairly, fairly quick. I'm just having that today, but. Probably wouldn't do much to our foundations. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's not going to do much, but but certainly our structural steel and right. the whole balcony would be yeah removed, right? Not the footprint. Not the footprint, yeah. Balcony. Yeah, there may be a few you know, internal ones, but but not significant. There's not how much is so we're talking completely deleting it, not just downsizing the balcony. Right. Correct. Something else coming up that's going to. Will there be community backlash if they're expecting the same? 
that's another piece. You know, your community is supporting this with their tax dollars, were they expecting the same amount of fees? One of the things I hear is, okay, but how many people are really using the tax oh oh job? Well, that could be just. It could be like a full time job. Just I might not for you right now.
You know, historically, there's the building institute, and then they also pay for the custodial time as a part of that building institute. Yeah, sure. I, I want to have like to let that move on to the Allen Court because okay. yes, yeah, so I go back into the, the various schools that go to the general fund and they go to pay down their bonds. So there's, there's lots of different places that money can go. Right now, it doesn't even make enough to replace white holes. That's a problem. <laughs> I mean, if it can't, if it can't even hold its own to maintain itself, then. But that's a, that's an outdated piece because I I like your idea. Yeah, it goes into. I think we have to. Well, the new facility or this will be a tool site. That's a great point. Come to this bank and look what you can. Mm -hmm. Well, I think. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, whoever is your is your friend. I just want to be the devil's advocate. But we've got one that's going to be 15. I don't have to say it. Like, I want one theater in town to hold 15. If it's not me, that's we don't. We don't probably need two. No, I don't know if we need two. We don't know what the audience is. Same audience, the same audience. Well, the same audience. Wherever the same audience is, I'd say that's where the same uh, I mean, they don't know. We don't have it yet. Seven boys. Seven. Okay. That is the cheapest, richest thing. See? <laughs> and they really don't know what they're doing. Yeah, we they, might, they, they might have. They might have. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna table this. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So we can, we're gonna move on to the next couple, and then we'll. we'll we it, this is a great discussion because this is exactly what we're. Yeah. This is exactly what we want to do. Uh, uh, next one, Riley. Um, okay, a couple little elements on the building, um, and it's really just doing some clear story stuff and kind of lowering them. Um, uh, those flush out with the existing roof. Is that the idea? There are a couple of mechanics. Okay. <laughs> The, the point why you design them in is because it brings natural daylight into and if you remember the way that we're kind of set up that really important to get that interior daylight in because not everywhere is because it's a massive building not everywhere has daylight so it's kind of an important so piece, guess, but we could replace them with we've got some tubular skylights that we've included which are not nearly as Again, sorry, you include it's just the top light, not the orange part of the outside. What, what do we? Just the top. So it's oh, it's the higher part. Yeah, so really like the orange. On the side. Yeah. On, on the roof. It's on the roof. Just on the roof. But it brings daylight in. Yeah. To the third floor. Yeah. So I guess what what would be the utility offset over the lifespan of the building? Versus yeah, you would offset the light with solar tubes, so then it would be the same light. It doesn't look the same, obviously. No, I don't it's, mean the, the same amount of light. Oh. You'd be pretty close, yeah. Riley? Oh, that's it? Never mind, Riley. That's all we have. <laughs> that's it. I think as an exec committee, we're probably going to need to get together to review that list again, probably in the near future. Um, and just kind of so we can give design team direction. Peter and JD, why don't you let me know, unless you know now, by when you need that direction. And uh, I know it's like yesterday. <laughs> but soon. It's going to be very tense. 
we probably need to get together. Really all of those, I think, because they're, they're so integral to the building. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the seating. Obviously, the seating. Yeah, the seating. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. The seating we don't you wouldn't have to decide on until we could take those out at any time really. You could leave them in now and take them out later if, if we need to. Resend me that list that you showed. Yeah. Yeah. Also, are staying within the boundaries that you told your taxpayers you would. 
Alex, on the construction side of this, where are you guys anticipating? I know you don't anticipate change orders, but you've done this long enough that you're going to anticipate change orders. So where are you? Where's your like stomach ache and like you're looking? So the the the, uh, the biggest. Was, uh, once you get to the GMP number, after we have 100% CD documents and we've got all of the, the bids, you know, look, 85% will be subcontracted out. So a lot of it will be under subcontract. The, 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 the risk in any budget of a school this size is, is, is any dirt problems, mainly parking lots. Um, I think we've anticipated all that in terms of our sections underneath our parking lots so that we're not we're not worried about running into soft spots. We really should be able to handle that. Um, and then once we tear down the building, you know, of course we're getting asbestos numbers here pretty soon. When we tear it down, what's underneath that we that we don't know about you know, that we can't anticipate? Those are always the big issues. <laughs> Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Two million, I can give you. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what they shaved the bottom off. No barrel. Then we get every car sales to the town. You get the mission. Sales, everything. There's so many things to the building. But we do have to go out and do things with the electrician and procure all the wiring and store it. And we're going to get all the drywall and the store it. We're going to get all the. Yeah. Piping, we're gonna we're gonna we're in the store. You gotta go get all that stuff right is now. There, is there anything within the building that you could? I, I mean, there's a bunch of floors, and we have some people you don't want to repeat because their history. I think that's I think that's for okay. conversation. There's there's no dollar values, but but there's and a lot of times too, if there is something about like copper or something like that, the company that will hire out for the demo of that building, that's integral into their budget. So. And it's been to the benefit of the district to do that because there's a time frame that they're working within. You know, to, to your point of kind of opening them up and letting people come in, you can do that, but then that takes, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks to get it out. We haven't so seen the value. The value in that. goes with the bid for the demo. But those people will know how to salvage that, which is salvageable very quickly. Yeah. So, President Foster just said that BMU Theater will be. Eight hundred tonight. tonight. Here is my issue. I think we all thought we had seen everything that a school would need to serve a purpose for, and then COVID hit. And politics aside, I will always kind of remember Diana saying, "Oh, we need to come look at your gym because if the hospital needs an overflow for COVID, it's going to your gym." And I think that given our centralized location, there is going to need to be the ability to. I hate to say it, have like emergency, like I hate to say like town hall type meetings in that. And so I, I hesitate to completely cut things down if we're not going to be able to get that, back. That kind of emergency could be done in the gym. Well, yes. Um, I'm, I'm remembering when we had the suicide and we packed our gym because the community was so mad at us. And, or not the gym, they came to the auditorium to yell at us. Um, <laughs> and and I just like in my heart, I just keep thinking, I, I get that there's yes, the gym would work. And I, I don't mind. I I have disagreed with Justin from the beginning. I think that our performing arts, he loves it, that's his background. I think it's a little too palatial for my taste. Um, but I, I don't want to see us completely change a building where we can't get it back. Like you need to cut things and then if we can add it back in, we can, great. You know, I'm not going to say chop off the, the top of the building and put those tubular skylights in, put that window flush with the building fine, get rid of the concrete. I just, I hesitate when it's, right. in, when it's as big of a change as that auditorium. Well, just make it, let's say we put it to one, two million. Okay, we can find There you go, it's a compromise. It's kind of a win win of saying, now move forward, but it's not fully out of this. And I don't want an emergency meeting to do that another. Well, everyone wants to come here. Next year, it's not a powwow. Let's sit down and iron this out and take it out. Let's find what, what's it. What's that number to get them? That's not too many. You know, yeah. There's, there's still a savings of a million. I mean, it's about like. Like one person's left. You know, Jim, Jim's yeah. nice, but you just don't have the acoustics. I mean, if you're having a large meeting of people, how many of us have been in a gym with 1,500 people? and 
do the acoustics in that really hold a very productive meeting. Very difficult to do. Yeah, that whole list of the two million dollars is less than two percent of the entire budget. To put that in kind of, <laughs> it's really, it's really interesting. To kind of looked at one other one that wasn't on the slide. We've just been tossing it around and potentially, and this would need a decision like probably tomorrow. <laughs> but um, it would be deleting the secondary gym in the main school, the new school, because of the option being saved. Um, but it's something we can look at, probably a couple million dollars. Two and a half to that. three million, somewhere. Pretty much yeah. every high school I've ever ever worked on, they would probably say you would regret that because they always need the gym space because there's so many athletics at a school like Grand Junction High School. Not to mention all the PE and everything that happens during the day. That's and best. <laughs> Yeah, and I need to look at the language. 
that he did that. No. And Beck wasn't paying for athletics or performing arts, so that's not part of what they would pay or not pay for, but it was more the safety thing that they might have an issue with. What about the money the community hospital donated? For what? For, for the, yeah. that's for the center of the court, right? Or, oh, okay. Well, they donated, they donated to okay. out for the gym and they donated a bigger amount that could be used for, for Yeah, perfect. I did not hear about the bigger amount. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to have to put some Yeah, I think the bigger, I think the bigger, I think the larger amount was 140,000. Yeah, it's like 30. 30 or 30. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So there's some, yeah, you, so you go pick items like the gym floor yeah. and, and, and you allocate those items to pay for which which window. <laughs> you can. Yeah. 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 yeah, there you go. Buy a sawtooth window. There you go. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Never Thank you guys. Anything else on your side? No, that's it for so us. So we were gonna want to go through the memorabilia, is that the right word? But yeah, sure. Peter, is that something since we've lost our executive committee to graduation, we have time on that. Uh, I mean, really, there's not a there's not a pressing need on that. Really, what we were going to do today is review what we think is a good process for that. Okay. Um, you know, our, one of our original thoughts was trying to some of the public if we see public input from the future. That's what you all would want to do. Um, if we were thinking, oh, we can tie some of that into the groundbreaking, but that's that's not a critical thing. Memorabilia is in, in the existing facility. Okay. Yeah. Pretty much everything from the mural to that whole statue. that whole north wall, which has got every plaque on it. Yeah, we're right to the ground. We've got people are wondering which one should we buy For 70 years, every ice, every senior class was donated gifts. Now we got to go through 70 years of gifts and also just eat. There's also so, the trophy graveyard where people have a door and they just open it. And there's there's so many 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 yeah, digitally yeah. rather than take yeah. space of the program. The banner yeah. is from 1933. The old banner. Oh, there's a couple of them. The tiger with the eyelashes. No, no, I no, not the tiger. <laughs> 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 It's a big conversation because there's there's a motion there's a motion tied to those things. Right. And when you tell someone that permit goes back and says, Oh, I remember when we did that, you can't get rid of that. And so that's that's the whole so that's the whole reason for that conversation is how, how do you integrate that into the building without taking up space on every wall or something? <laughs> but but let the public have input on what uh, well, I think there's also, I think it's good to have the conversation, but there's also dollars attached. Yeah. Right. And so if the community wants it, do they pay for it or do we have to carve it out of the budget? And yeah, is it doing the new building somehow, somewhere? Some of it, some of it can. I mean, that's part of what we, what we start looking at. So, but you don't want to, you got to leave room for the new stuff too, you know? Right. No. ceremony program I didn't um, get an email to me to review with you but if I get it I'll send it out 
on when that what that looks like, but everybody put in your calendars now for June 1st. I'm breaking, I think it's in the morning. If you're all invited, can we all have you come? It's going to be in the right field. It's going to be in right field. Right field. It's about the main entrance. The district communication folks are kind of leading that process with um, FBI's marketing and DLR. Megan, yeah. yep, so they're pros at that stuff. So there's like checklists and all sorts of stuff. <laughs> oh, she did? Oh, I can probably pull it up. It sent it to me before, but I couldn't open it. Those are a secret vault somewhere where you keep all the good old stuff. Yeah. There's lots of stuff. Yeah. One of them has a fruit fly infestation. And that's been a treat. Be well, be sure you bring those in. Oh, we will. Do you know what time it came across? Okay. I'll try to find them, but I don't know. Yeah, I do. What day is that tonight? I mean, well, today's the night, the 16th. I'll be back in town on the 17th for the board meeting. You could either do the 16th or the 17th. You have like kids pick up and drop off. What time is that usually? Normally it's right now, but it's okay. okay. Usually around four. I do the same thing. So I get three to four. Okay. Uh, okay, those of you on the Zoom, we are I think, concluded for now. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, bye.